Blakeville, a town with a population just a little over 12,000. And to the untrained eye, it could look like just a few lakes, a couple of churches, and a subway. So you're probably asking yourself, what if you're an atheist who doesn't like sandwiches? What is there to do? Well, that's where I come in. I'm Boston Paquette, and I'm going to show you things to do in Lakeville. Well, I guess this is the last time I'll be showing you things to do in Lakeville. I hope you've enjoyed this journey as much as I've enjoyed making it. I'm honestly super grateful for the fact that Lake Ham allowed me to make this series, especially with it being my senior year. It feels like there's a great accumulation of everything that I've done in Lakeville. Sure, making this show has been a ton of work and I put a lot of effort into it, but it's gotten me out doing things that otherwise I probably wouldn't be doing. And I'm really grateful for that. If you told me about this show a year ago, I would have said, wow, that's a great idea. And I would have stolen it. This whole process has honestly taught me that you can't really ever know your future. And when you're in the present, you just gotta do the best you can. And when the present is seemingly about to end, it's really tough to let that happen because endings are sad, but they have to happen. So I really hope you stick with me through this whole episode because endings are important and they're honestly not easy. An easy ending for this episode would be for me to cut it to black and having you sit there on your computer screen looking at a reflection of yourself. But I don't wanna do that. I wanna make this special. So I hope you enjoy the final episode of Things to Do in Lakeville. We're here at Lakeside. It might be in Freetown, but the word lake's in it. So we're doing it anyway. I didn't want any sunlight to be wasted. I immediately started to do some interviews. I'm here with Stacy Tavares. Nice to meet you. And I noticed that your name's not Bob. <laughs> it is but not. But we're standing in the Bob's <laughs> game booth. True, true. Can you tell me a little bit about the game? About Bob, I would say, I don't personally know Bob, but he invented the game a few years. So today we're selling some Portuguese food. We got languisa, cassola, and some kale soup. Are you Portuguese yourself? I am, I'm 50% so you... Portuguese. Nice, so you know a lot about that. I do. Out of the three of those, what's your favorite? Casorla. What is, I'm not Portuguese, I don't I don't know. So it's like a uh, pork marinated, and it's like, it has like it's orangey color to it, and it's like a shredded pork, it's really That's, good. That sounds good. It's the most popular one also? Your Probably Casorla and kale soup, we make that at home, and people come in with containers ready to get it really? to like take oh, home, that's, so. That's awesome. I was having a great time interviewing people, but then, I noticed something a little strange. And being the little detective boy I am, I had to go check it out. Uh, smoking out of that thing? Do you see? Oh, you, we can't, the wall's in the way. Look at, let's see if it's, oh my, of course it's not doing anything, I'm just kidding. Where, where, yeah, where are you talking about? It was like right above the carousel, I swear. Uh, I know there's a generator right there, but I don't know. Oh, I can't believe we, I can't believe it. I felt much safer after one of the employees assured us that it was just some generator excreting black smoke. Time for me to go back and have some fun. What brought you guys to Lakeside? The rides. The 
Fun friends and environment. The food. The food. <laughs> Boredom. So would you say it was something to do around town? Uh, definitely something to do since I like haven't been like in public in a while. So definitely getting out there. All right. All right. So I'm here with Brian Parker's the third. Upon a quick great, upon a quit legend. One of the best students I ever was in a CP physics okay. class with. Okay. How are you doing, Ryan? Uh, I'm doing great. You know, I just came down here to enjoy maybe some rides, you know, some food. You know, the, all the local vendors here, you know, came support, you know, local families, local people. He great loves. times. Yes. What, how many rides have you guys got on? Like 30. 30 now. All of them. All of them? Yeah. What's your favorite? Probably that one right there. Oh. We almost threw up. You almost threw up? Yeah. I feel like I definitely almost, would. Yeah. Jesse, Aubrey. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet and you. You're here at Lakeside for what reason? Just having fun. Just have fun. fun. What's yeah. your favorite ride that you. Freak out. The freak, freak out. It's, uh, they actually changed the name. What is it? It's, it's called the Warrior now. The Warrior. Yeah. Here so I can you say it again just in a full set, just for continuity reasons? My the favorite wa ride at Lakeside is the, the Warrior. Warrior. The Warrior. What is your least favorite thing about Lakeside? Um, how oh, expensive right. the slushies are. Everything's really overpriced. The rides, everything. Okay, we're about it's to all go. overpriced. The tickets. Okay. What is this interview for, though? Uh, TV, cable TV. Really? Are you serious? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna go in a documentary called Things to Do in Lakeville okay, Summer on, Activities. Awesome, man. Okay. Thank you. Everyone have. The whole day I kept getting lucky having good interviews after good interviews. So I was not prepared at all for what was about to happen. What are you guys doing here right now? Uh, just, just going on rides, you know, trying to find some ladies, not gonna lie. Have you had any food yet? No, 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 no we're, no, we're no, about to, we're about to go get some food. Everybody's gas. Huh? It's gas. The food is gas? Yeah. It's cooked with gas or what? No, no it's, it's straight, straight good. It's so good, it's so oh, good. Am I allowed to swear? Warrior. No! Am I allowed to swear? Could you ask Nike to give me a sponsor? You're ugly! Get out, get out you guys, three of you guys have the same you. shoes. Yeah! Oh yeah! This is like once a year. Yeah, I, yeah that's why we're here uh, today and not like yesterday when it wasn't yeah. happening. Yeah, come to Lakeside! Come to Lakeside! Come to Lakeside! Come to Lakeside. Yeah. All right, sorry. Yeah. Most definitely come out to Lakeside. If you're out here in Lakeville, come out to Lakeside. This is where, this is the place to be. Yeah. Got the ladies, the got the food, got the rides. Everything. Yeah. And it's also homes. hot, guys. Yeah. Do you mind? You literally have a whole man, bro. Calm down. Yeah. yeah. All right. Ready? Right. Lakeside on three. One, One two, two, three. three. Hey, I'm I'm just editing right now, and I uh, I just wanted to say sorry for putting that in. Once day turned into night, I was no longer a Lake Cayman employee. Now I was just a pedestrian at Lakeside who was wearing a Lake Kim shirt. And it's pretty safe to say, I had a blast. And I'm not scared of the rides I went on at all. I clearly had an awesome time at Lakeside, don't get me wrong, but I'm not complaining that the next thing to do in Lakeville was a little bit more laid back. <laughs> the Once Upon a Generation storytelling program was created by Karen Chase and Andrea Lovett. It is a fantastic program that helps bridge generational divides through the art of storytelling. It is where a student gets paired up with a senior citizen, and they learn a short, true story about that senior's life. And three-ish months later, after perfecting it and making the story their own, the students perform the senior stories at a storytelling festival. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Oh, 
What's this? Austin and I are a part of it? <laughs> well, you did say it sounded pretty cool. Hi, my name is Austin okay. Pelletier. And I'm Boston Paquette. And we'll be telling Pat's story, A Walk Through DeVoe Park. I won't show you the whole story because it's seven minutes long, but here's some of the hardest hitting jokes we told that night. So I got dressed after breakfast. <laughs> You can probably tell that we really blew the roof off of that place. If you want to watch our whole story and the other storyteller stories, you can do so on Lee Kim's YouTube page. I've been doing this program since I was in fifth grade and I've been lucky enough to have the same senior, Pat Kernin, every year. It's gotten to the point that he's like a grandfather to me and every year I'm excited that I, I get to see him and I'm able to tell one of his stories. It's one of those things that feels like I'm actually making a difference. Because sure, it's just telling someone's story, but I'm helping keep it alive. And I know one day I want my stories to stay alive. Pat, what drew you to storytelling initially, all those years ago before we knew each other? Uh, being a... Uh police officer, writing was a big part of the job. Anything that you really did at work um, resulted in a report being filed. So it was writing that and then when I retired, I thought of all the times and all the incidents that I run into as a police officer in town here. And um, I thought, you know, like in the words of Dragnet, the names have been changed to protect the innocent, but the stories were still good. Would you be a storyteller yourself? Yes, I, I would be. And um, I have worked on, um, aside from this, I've worked on uh, story slams where you get together with um, storytellers from different locations and um, whatever the best story voted by the audience wins a prize, a small cash prize and whatnot. So uh, it's been this program here and it's been story slams that I've been involved with. Do you think me and Austin were bad at storytelling when we first started? N no, from the very beginning, um, I thought you were super creative in the way you delivered the story. Um, Taking literary license, well, that's that's every storyteller's, um, uh, you know, point of view. Every storyteller has the right to do that to make the story fit the way they are telling it. But no, I, I, I thought you guys were, I thought you guys were great on delivery. Me and Austin. We're hanging on. Austin's on one end of the cliff. I'm on the other end of the cliff. And you're right in the middle. And, we're, and you're 30 feet away from both of us. Okay. You have to save one, and you can't save the other. Uh, the first thing I would do is uh, I would peruse the area, uh, the terrain. And if there was like a grocery store um, or some type of um, uh, maybe even supermarket, I would probably go in first and get a couple of ring dings to, to bring my stamina up so that I could make this rescue and, you know, go on to bigger and better things. Um, being a superhero that I am, um, I probably would have reached out one in each hand and grabbed you. If I had to grab oh, like, one. Like Elastigirl? Uh, uh, yes, very much like Elastigirl. You know? Of course. So far, the start of summer seemed to be off to a pretty promising start until it wasn't so promising. You see, the end of my high school career brought lots of big changes in my life, as it would for anyone. It brought forth some very important things ending, while seemingly important things starting. And as graduation crept closer, it seemed to cause more stress and uncertainty towards multiple aspects of the upcoming months. But luckily for me, lacrosse has always been a great stress reliever, and oh, we just, we lost our last playoff game. That, that stinks, I guess I'll never play that sport again. Well, graduation's two days away now, and feeling pretty confused about multiple of these big changes, hey, maybe some exercise can help. But, oh, I just, I forgot, I actually, I broke my thumb in half, 
in that last lacrosse game and I need surgery then <laughs> whoops um well my surgery is scheduled for this Friday so we'll be able to bang that out right away but I I actually I can't make that because I I gotta do something please welcome Zachary Bossano teacher at Freetown Lakeville Middle School Boston James Paquette Laker Nation Award Well, where were we? I graduated, I broke my thumb, I got the surgery, I can't exercise, play lacrosse, or edit videos. But hey, at least that gives me plenty of weeks to do nothing but ferment my own thoughts about whether or not these big changes are actually for the best, because sometimes you think certain changes are needed or will benefit you, but then they turn out not to be so good, or maybe they will be good, but it's just too early to know. But the thought of waiting to see how they'll all unfold is ultimately something that you wish you could just push under a carpet and forget about, because that's easier than actually facing the facts. Now, some of you may be thinking, sounds like a pretentious not bad crashing out, but it's not. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm... I mean, just look at the stuff I was doing after I got my cast off and try to tell me that that seems like somebody who's crashing out. No one's safe, we kill for fun under the hot summer sun. Anyway, taking a few steps back, or a few weeks, that is, once I was off all the thumb painkillers, I heard of an event that would get any teenager excited. Beer. Can history. To be honest, I was a little bit confused of what exactly I was walking into. But I found it surprisingly interesting, and I actually learned a ton about beer cans. My name's Kevin Logan. I'm the curator of an oddball curiosity over in East Taunton, known as the Beer Can Museum. And you'd go to your local grocer and you'd basically get a heavy wooden case of clear bottles like this one. This is a Schlitz bottle from the Joseph Gann uh, Bottling Company in Boston, 1909. They had the whole Schlitz account for all of New England. But there's a few things you'll notice about it. It's heavy, if I drop it, it's gonna break. I have to pay a deposit on it in 1909, and I have to lug it home, and then I have to bring it back. The brewers would have to sanitize these up to 25 times. So it was kind of a pain, but it was what they had. On January 24th, 1935, a day that goes down in history, the first can of beer is sold in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and you had to put the instructions on the can of how to open it, because this was new to the beer drinking public. But Daniel Kudzik at Reynolds Aluminum Corporation finally invents the stay on tab. Uh, he saves many heels from being cut at the beach. To starters, do you enjoy drinking beer or is it the thrill of finding the can? That's a great question. Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, Obviously, I wouldn't drink the beer out of these cans from the 1930s, mm, yucky. but I, I do enjoy some of the modern IPAs, but I, it is the thrill of discovery, the thrill of the find. Somebody uh, probably had a good night that probably. night. Probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I have pictures in some cases that that's an olive drab World War II can. They're very hard to come by. I don't have one in the museum yet. So the I, picture kind of holds. It helps tell the story this. of, of right. the olive drab. Man, like I feel like I'm kind of like at a party, you know. Right. I mean, I'm not. Right. I'm right. not 21, but yeah, yeah. I feel like one day I could be at like a barbecue. Yeah, exactly. I, I've been invited to a party before, but do you think you could see it, right? Like one day, maybe. If uh, I'm absolutely. Getting absolutely. if I get invited. <laughs> I was happy to hear that Kevin thought I could be invited to a party, and you know what's kind of like a party for a car? A car wash. Sorry, segues are hard. Car wash now! Car wash now! What do we want? Car wash! When do we want it? Now! Car wash now. How much is it? Five dollars! So, me and Austin were driving around looking for things to do in Lakeville. When we happened to spot at the local Circle K, there was a car wash happening, which actually was perfect because 
Admittedly, Austin's car was a little bit dirty. When I saw Austin's car, it was pretty dirty, but no car too big, no car too small. We cleaned this car pretty good. I'd say so. Enjoy senior year, enjoy every moment. I mean, I remember when it was my senior year, <laughs> the glory days, I call it, but. You know, well, when I was over here earlier, it didn't really seem like you were washing the car. Okay. You were kind of standing around while our car was getting washed. Well, it seems like your peers are washing cars. You know, in you have to wait for the cars to get sprayed down first before you can start, you know, sponging them up. You could have picked up the hose and got the job done. That's true. Would you say you're pulling your fair share of weight here, or no, I'm actually, are you I'm coasting? Actually, I'm actually not in Stuco, so I'm just I'm just here to volunteer. Uh, you're, I really, you're I a slacker. Really uh, you're a slacker, here, McFly. Oh, no, I'm here by choice. You're a slacker, McFly. McFly. Back to the Future. Oh, oh. Yeah, I get it. I get the reference. So it wasn't that good. You know, in that movie, uh, it was like a game changer when Doc figured out that cars could fly. Yeah. Because then they didn't need roads where they were going. Did they still need car washes? They did. Oh my god, Ricky. It has hand on. What? Did they dirty this up? It looks like the dirt was on purpose. purpose. Yeah. I think you might have a purpose. It might have been. We, no, we went muddy. You guys just ran into like a mud pile or something? Like, yeah. Yeah, that must have been from when he drove through all the mud. That must have been. Yeah. Mud? Austin must have, like, a day or two ago. So I actually am getting the pleasure to speak with somebody who's getting their car washed <laughs> right now. And I'm just wondering, do you think the students of the class of 2025 are doing a good job? Yeah, I think they're doing really well. Washing the car. They're scrubbing it well and they're cleaning every... Yeah. They... Because actually our car isn't that clean. It, they did like an all right job. Um, I, I think ours will be better. I think they seem to be putting a lot of effort in. So I, I just think they're working well together as a team. As usual, beer cures everything. And a week after the beer can talk, I was back. Worse than ever, I could kind of touch my thumb to my pinky, and I could pick up a marble using my thumb and my pointer finger. But nonetheless, I was back. And luckily, I was back just in time for a birthday party. America's birthday party. And if there's one thing America's known for, it's kings and queens. I have the honor to speak to Miss Freetown and Miss Lakeville. As a resident of this town, they're pretty much everybody's idol, I feel like, and they're kind of like Batman. You never really get to really see them or talk to them. So this is a very special moment for me. Uh, you are... I'm Erica Correa. I'm Katie Thomas. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about being Miss Freetown and Miss Lakeville? Yeah, so we're part of the Miss America organization and what that means is we compete for local titles and so these are our local titles that we um, competed in a pageant and we won and then we both competed at states so for Miss Massachusetts and then if you win states you go to Miss America so that's kind of how it all kind of loops in. Tomorrow's 4th of July, it's America's birthday. Yes. So speak of America, what were you guys' thoughts on the presidential debate the other day? No, I, I try to stay far away from that. Um, it's, it's, it's very hard to be part of those situations, so I stay clear away from those. Yeah. What do you guys think you're going to do come voting season?
Do you like fireworks? I love fireworks. I think they're amazing. I like the colors. The colors, that's your favorite part, do you think? Yes. Do you like the ones that go bang or the ones that go pop? I like that pooch. Those ones are cool. You know what? I, I always think those ones, do you know uh, where the wild things are? Yes. The book? I always think the ones that go kind of looks like the uh, the creatures, like from the back. Because, you know, they, they're big and they have, they're like, circ they have a circle head and then they have uh, hair that goes down like that. Yeah. I've, ever since I was a little boy, I always thought that. Yeah, I guess so. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. What, uh, do you guys know why we celebrate 4th of July? Uh, For your Sigma? For the well, independence of America. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. The independence of America. The independence of America. I like the name because it's like beer pong, but without, because it's in, ba in barrels. Yeah. Aw. Uh, I still do? Yes! Thank you so much. Can I throw one? Sure, yeah. How do I do it? You throw it on the ground. Oh, you guys can pass. We're just goofing. I just throw a bouncy ball and it just explodes. Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't usually like make loud noises, I don't know. Firework! Oh, ow. Yeah. I mean, it hurt. It hurt like a little bit, it hit my leg, but. Yeah. Th Thanks for letting me uh, throw it, that was sick. Well, have a good one. So, what's your guys' favorite part of the firework? Um, is it when it explodes or when it's still in the container? Ooh. <laughs> My favorite thing of the virus is when it goes up and then it's the big one and then it goes boo 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 like the little oh, ones there. One? Yeah. I really like when it's in the container Me and, too. I'm, and I'm like, what? I'm like, what is that? What is it gonna do? Yeah. You know? and Which one is this one? I know. You yeah. know what's crazy about it being in a container? is like a lot of things are in containers a lot of the time yeah. before they're open yeah. so before like it lights off it could just be a container yeah, yeah. and it's like it's so it's when you question yourself yeah. right it could already what i've there's yeah. so much there's so much sick stuff about the container and when it goes off it's just like lights wow. it's whatever I don't, yeah. like i can turn on a light at my house if yeah. i want yeah. what about you guys um i like the finale when it goes like crazy yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like the finale. The finale's the best. I like when it explodes. When it what? Explodes. Oh yeah, that's cool too, I guess. You you don't really like when it's just in the container doing nothing? Okay, that, whatever, <laughs> that's fine. We got here very early to secure a parking spot and permission to film, which is all fine and dandy, but it also meant I was really starting to feel how long I've actually been here. Sitting by the trash can. Standing by the trash, sitting by the trash can on the 3rd of July. And with about an hour left before the fireworks would go off, I was really hoping something silly might happen. And something silly did just that. We ran into Brian, my former CP physics classmate from earlier in the episode. However, Brian had watched Things to Do in Lakeville episode 3 recently and thought I'd cut him from the episode, due to the fact that episode 3 came out during the time of Lakeside, and all of my attempts to explain to him that his interview was for episode 4, the episode we're currently filming, blew right by him. And well, Brian, now you've made the cut twice. Best interview at Lakeside. Brian. Best interview at Lakeside. They didn't put it in the video. Alright? That's from the last episode. One of the awesome. Yes, it is. Dude, these <laughs> don't know how to produce a video. No, that, All right, then. It was for this episode. Blah, 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 blah. That was that was I did. Already. No, we didn't. Yes, you did. I watched it. No, you watched it. I watched it. Edit that boo, bro. I watched it. See? This kid's lying. This kid's lying straight to your face right now. Anything? It's acceptable. I'm not. It's yes, he is. He really is. The episode. Blah, blah, blah. Things to do Lakeville part three. No. I already watched <laughs> part four. Sorry. No. I watched it. This is part five. No. This isn't Lakeville. This is part four. This isn't Lakeville. This kid's lying to you. 
We're going nuts. Kids are lying. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. It's yes, it's a stone. It actually is Sona Village. Oh, yeah, it's not really. Me. You don't deserve it. Yo, get I never did see that hat again. But I couldn't be sad for long because it was firework time, baby. Foot. Big foot, yeah. He's yo, yo, yo. As the fireworks started to go off, something happened inside me. A little awakening, if you will. An aha moment. I hadn't really been feeling like myself recently, and I didn't know how to try and get back to feeling like myself. But as I was watching those fireworks, something hit me. The way each one rocketed up into the sky just to explode. It made me feel like I finally understood what I've been dealing with these past few weeks. And I decided to tell you guys. Well, thanks for letting me pour my heart out there for a second. That did make me feel better, and I hope you gained something from my speech too. Now with my thumb feeling a lot better, it was time to go listen to some music. So I'm here at Lakeville Center Stage, and I was told that there was an alcohol stand in the bar, and so I wanted to come and check it out. I'm here with Caleb. Kaylin, and so you brought all the alcohol here to Lakeville Center Stage, right? Uh, there's actually no alcohol in any of the drinks that I'm making today. Oh. <laughs> what? So what do you call them? Uh, so they're called mocktails. Why exactly a mocktail instead of trying to drink to forget? Uh, mostly because I don't think we're allowed to drink on this property. We are next to a library, yeah. so. And like a lot of children, and um, it costs a lot to like get the liquor license and stuff like that. That makes sense. Is it cool if I stand next to the fan for a second? Yeah, cool down a little yeah. bit. At least we're in the shade, so it's nice. Yeah, we're set up right in the sun. It's pretty, oh, cool. pretty hot called the traveling spirit traveling spirit yeah. check out the traveling spirit thanks so much thank you i can't wait to drink this all right we're warmed up we're ready for this The Juckets were really talented, and I was really inspired by their musical ability, so I had to get an interview. You guys just rocked out, and I just had some of these uh, mock tales. Oh, it was like, it was good, yeah. So if I'm like a little distracted, I had a few of these. Um, we can edit that. Yeah, it was. Tasty. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have one. You should, you should. So, how did the band wow. start? Go ahead. You can answer that one. Oh, well, let's see. You're kind of the founder. I'm the founder. So, okay. So Have you seen that movie? The founder? Yeah, the yeah. McDonald. It's like about the guy who founded McDonald's. Oh. I did see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, just, it was pretty good. That's you, pretty much. Okay, so band. I'm the guy, who, like the guy who founded McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and um, let's see, Kevin moved to the Berkshires, and he's a musician, singer, songwriter. 
And um, I was learning how to play the banjo, and we started playing a little together. Yeah. And Mike, my husband, um, was picking up the bass, and um, so we just sit in the living room and play. It, so were you guys always musical kids? Like, were you guys always singing around the house? Yeah. Like, flubba lubba love. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we used to sing Christmas carols. Go out with our dad would take us out to homes with the neighborhood kids, and we sing Christmas carols. Or in Lakeville. Yeah, we were always we we're mm -hmm. always involved with. Um, you know, since elementary school and the choir and the band and we did plays and uh, musicals and we, we've always been involved heavily into the arts. We were the, yeah. like the first when the middle school, Austin, I don't even know what it's called anymore, the Austin Middle School. Oh, the, the school yeah, Grays. Yeah, we were like the first group that went in. Oh, that. really? Yeah, yeah, we're old. We were paving, yeah, we're <laughs> paving the path. Paving yeah. the path for everybody oh, yeah. else. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we caused all the trouble so you guys wouldn't have to get in trouble. <laughs> Did you notice that they changed the town hall roof? To oh, like no, a, I didn't. It's kind of yellow now. I don't I didn't really know, know why they that, did it, but doesn't I, it look like oh, oddly it's yellow? For, for this is I this is the most beautiful it. building in Lakeville, I think. Yeah. Um, we had Girl Scouts there. That's oh, where we would go for Girl Scouts. Yeah. And uh, I was just so excited that we were going to be playing and we were going to be looking, looking at, at this building. beautiful building. Um, yeah. Lakeville Center Stage was a lot of fun, and the juckets were really good. And now, with my thumb almost all the way healed up, it was finally time for me to be able to dive right into a Lakeville summer staple. We're at Clear Pond today, and if you live in Lakeville, which who else would really be watching, you know that Clear Pond is always a jumping place in the summer. And my hand just got better, I have mobility back, and now I can swim. Let's go. So I am here with Douglas Berry, Parks Director for the Town of Lakeville. And you've been the owner of Clear Pond for how many years? Well, I've been the park director for going on close to 50 years. I started as the director in 1984, but I started working here in 1969. And I missed probably about seven or eight years in between them. Oh, okay. And I used to always come here when I was a kid, and I absolutely loved it. So how do you feel that Clear Pond has brought so much to the community. That's because we are family oriented and our motto has always been healthy, safety mm -hmm. and clean. Yeah. And we run a lot of events for the kids so yeah. we try to keep it active and keep it moving. Uh, we have music in the parks programs and our events programs and so we add a little bit more than just going to the beach. Right, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you have any favorite aspects of working here at Clear Pond? Uh, the favorite aspects, again, is just seeing the smiles on all the kids' faces. That's that's the that's the best part, and making sure that everybody is safe and has a good. Because water is dangerous, and yet it is fun. Yes, yeah. it is both dangerous yeah. and fun. Mm -hmm. Aaron, I just saw you take away a child's boogie board who was playing in the water. I'm just wondering why. Um. It is uh, park policy that we can't have any flotation devices because a child could drown under it and they'd get trapped underwater. Well then, great job saving that kid's life. What is your favorite part about working here at Clear Pond? It's definitely the people, you know? Yeah. It's just a really good vibe here too. Like working with the people? Yes, work, working with the people and then everybody who comes here, they're all like really good people. You're gonna be a cable TV star. I don't even know what that means. Cable TV, like, Community access. Yeah, okay. So I'm here with the lovely Maureen, right? Thank that, you. Yes. Yeah, that's what the lifeguard said. Um, and so you're a you're a Lakeville resident who comes to Clear Pond often. I come to Clear Pond at least usually about six times a week. Wow, that's one less than um, the, the week. Yeah, I usually take one day off or something. Oh, or I have a rest day. Yeah, well, a rest day or just, you know, uh, we, we're taping all this. This is crazy. Um, yeah, I usually take a, a day of rest or I have something else going on. I would I would love to see this place turned into a dog park off season. Get that. We need a dog park in Lakeville. We don't have one. Everyone has dogs and this would be a great place. It's all fenced in. I would love to see that happen. Let's get that petition going. I decided that this is my moment. I wasn't going to let my thumb hold me back anymore. I was going to swim out to the raft and show everybody on that pond my final impact.
Did you, did, you did, you, did you see my final impact? No, I did. But the splash, though, when I did. It was amazing. Thank you. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. The fact that you finally got off that was amazing. I, well, it was really tall. It was taller than I Don't thought. Don't get me in this. I, it was, it was <laughs> taller than I thought. So now. Come on. Well, what can I say? Another super fun day at Clear Pond checked off. And it definitely felt good swimming and actually be able to do something active with my thumb. On to the next thing, I guess. The next and final thing to do in Lakeville was an ice cream social held by the Friends of the Council on Aging. It was a really nice time just to see the community come together and have some ice cream. We do any type of fundraising events. This ice cream social happens to be a, a thank you celebration and it's free to anybody that wanted to come. But more often than not, we're either we've sold bricks We've sold sweatshirts with the insignia of the friends on it. We do anything and everything that we can to raise money for the COA. The COA is the Council on Aging in Lakeville, and it's an organization that anybody over 60 is welcome to join. They've got so many events going on. They have a published newsletter every month that has a calendar, and literally every day is filled with events. Having this little ice cream social at the very end of summer was really nice. It was a good reminder of the community of Lakeville, which is pretty much the main aspect of this show. And although it was really nice, I wanted this final episode to end with a bang. Born in a South Mass town Didn't think there's much to do around Went, went searching, searching up and, and down. down Things, Things to, to do, do, yeah, yeah that's, that's what, what we found. found Born in Lakeville in May I was born in Lakeville in May Don't, Don't check, check my birth certificate cause hey Born in Lakeville in May Wanted to make these things heard Got on TV and I spread the word Things, Things to, to do, yeah, there was so much Got lucky and I filmed a bunch Born in Lakeville in May I was born in Lakeville in May Don't check my birth certificate, cause hey Born in Lakeville in May Arts and crafts dance the night away And dogs were wet on a sunny day Made a priest mad but that's okay Cause we're born in Lakeville in May Born in Lakeville in May I was born in Lakeville in May Don't check my birth certificate cause hey Born in Lakeville in May Cookies and carols, what's that sound? Holiday season had come to town Mockingbird Hill cut the trees all down Santa Claus had come around Filmed too much, that was weird, I fear What was I doing? Well, that's still not clear Got too excited about being here I'll try, I'll try to, to do, do better, better next year. year. Hunting, Hunting for, for eggs and selling flowers. flowers. Looked up at the sun for hours. Boy fishing showed me life's alright. Got me hoping that the future's bright. Born in Lakeville in May. I was born in Lakeville in May. Don't check my birth certificate, cause hey Born in Lakeville in May Summer brings swims and fairs Car washes and we learned about beers We broke our thumb and got real sad Making this episode is all we had 
Born in Lakeville in May, I was born in Lakeville in May. Don't check my birth certificate, cause hey. Born in Lakeville. Making this show was an awesome experience, and I don't regret any of the time and effort I put into it. Even when my friends tell me I should, because nobody watches the show. And if they do watch the show, they only watch five minutes. And then they tell me why, why even make the show if n nobody's going to watch the show. And honestly, that's kind of a good question sometimes. And I think I've thought about that over the past year. And I come up with a few ideas of what the real point was. It could possibly be a way to share Lakeville's story over the past year. It could be a way for me to further my passion for video creation at a higher level. It could be a way for me to document my haircut from going from fine to really bad to fine again. It might also be a way for me to share my story and my problems and experiences through the lens of a comedy documentary series that never takes itself too seriously. But that it's not the last one, that'd just be stupid. I think I finally do know what the whole point of this whole show was, and it was the paycheck.